Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to get through this thing called life. Electric word, life, it means forever, and that's a mighty long time. But I'm here to tell you, there's something else. The afterworld. A world of never-ending happiness. You can always see the sun, day or night. So when you call up that shrink in Beverly Hills, you know the one, Dr. Everything will be all right. Instead of asking him how much of your time is left, ask him how much of your mind, baby. Cause in this life, things are much harder than in the afterworld. In this life, you're on your own. And if the elevator tries to bring you down, go crazy, punch a higher floor. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. And thank you for subscribing to the latest edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. I'm 12 Kyle. Check this out (laughs) on this podcast. What we're going to do is we're going to go back. We're going back to the 80s. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare and contrast and pit two phenomenal classic albums against each other. You see the cover art. (laughs) You already know the vibes. We're talking Michael Jackson's Thriller versus Prince's Purple Rain. Now, I'm going to be honest. If you were outside like me at this particular time, you know that there were always comparisons between Michael Jackson and Prince, right? And naturally, these two albums uh, were constantly compared. And honestly, depending on where you were and who you were with, the discussion of these two albums against each other would, at the very minimum, start an argument (laughs) at the very minimum but it is very possible again depending on who you are and where you were and who you were with uh, a fight could break out (laughs) fighting over Purple Rain and Thriller Uh, so what I wanted to do was take this podcast and and I have my own criteria which we'll get into in a few minutes um and come up with a definitive way as to figuring out which album was better, right? Um, And again, both of these albums are classics in their own right, and I'll touch on them in just a second, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to pit Thriller versus Purple Rain. Now, I'm trying to think, what what can I tell you about Thriller that you don't already know before we start breaking the stuff down? Um... Let's see. Thriller was released uh, November 30th, 1982. Um, your boy was about to turn 10 <laughs> in December. So, yeah, this this I, I go back with this album. Um, it was recorded between April 14th and November 8th of 1982. Uh, it was produced by the legendary, uh, the goat of all goats, <laughs> Quincy Jones. Uh, and obviously some of the great writers on this album, uh, the late, great Rod Temperton, Steve Paracco, Jeff Bettis, uh, the late James Ingram, and of course, the late, great king of pop, Michael Jackson. Uh, this album has a total runtime of 42 minutes and 19 seconds. And there are nine tracks, right? Uh, what else about Thriller? Obviously... It goes without saying that Thriller is the best selling album of all time. And just to kind of give you a perspective, everybody had this album like in the world. (laughs) I mean, like seriously, everybody had this album. This album sold 66 million copies worldwide. Uh, It was certified platinum 33 times by the 
uh, RIAA, that's the uh, Recording Industry Association of America. Um, it won, I think, eight Grammys in 84, including Album of the Year, Beat It won Record of the Year. Um, and I think Michael Jackson also, he, I think, he went to, how many American music? I think he won like a bunch of American music, American music awards, excuse me, as well. So, I mean, like he was the man, eight Grammys again. I mean, like that, that set a record at the time. I mean, he just, he cleaned up. I mean, he, he was, this was the dominating album. So it got all of these awards, all of these record sales, you know, Michael Jackson became a house. I mean, like there was no bigger superstar than Michael Jackson. And this album is what did it for him. Now, conversely, Purple Rain. Uh, Purple Rain was released June 25th, 1984. It was recorded between August 1983 and March of 1984. This album, unlike... <laughs> Unlike Thriller, it was produced by Prince and the Revolution, his band. That's it. There were no outside people helping with this one. This was just Prince and the Revolution. Uh, Prince, he played, uh, obviously, lead guitar and the piano and lead vocals. Uh, and then there was the Revolution. Uh, that consisted of Wendy Melvoin, who was on guitar and vocals. Uh, Brown Mark. <laughs> I always thought that was a dope name. Brown Mark. Uh He was on bass, guitar, and vocals. Lisa Coleman on keyboards, piano, and vocals. Matt, Dr. Fink (laughs) on keyboards and vocals. And Bobby Z on drums. Um, And all songs were written by Prince with the exception of Computer Blue, which was written by Prince, his late father, John L. Nelson, and uh, Wendy and Lisa, and Dr. Fink. Um, let's see. What do you need to know about Purple Rain? Um, it was Prince's first album to reach number one on the Billboard 200. Uh, the album spent 24 consecutive weeks at the top of Billboard 200. Um, it was on the charts for 122 weeks. This album was certified platinum 13 times by the uh, RIAA. Uh, let's see. Thriller sold 66 million copies worldwide. Purple Rain sold 25 million copies worldwide, still making it one of the best selling albums of all time. Uh, Prince and the Revolution won Grammy Awards and the best for the best rock vocal performance by a duo or group. Um, and of course, I would be remiss if I did not tell you that there was a movie that was released subsequently right after the album. Uh, July 27th of 1984 called Purple Rain, the movie. Um, and so you got all of those things kind of factoring in. So the, the movie Purple Rain was, you know, loosely based on Prince's life and it incorporated a lot of the videos and everything that we saw, including the album, um, as well as his performances in the movie, uh, him performing songs from the album. So it's really ingenious if you think about it. Um, uh, but we're not here to talk about that. We don't care. I don't care about record sales. I just wanted to give you particularly those who weren't around, who weren't outside or, you know, some of you who weren't born yet, <laughs> um, give you some perspective as to how incredible both of these albums were. And again, this is pre-internet because we're talking 84, right? There is no internet. So it's not about your download streams. It's not about how many times your video was on MTV or any of that stuff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down track by track and we'll go track for track. And the reason being that we can do this is that both Purple Rain and Thriller both have nine tracks. Uh, the total runtime on Purple Rain is 43 minutes and 51 seconds. So it's just the, the album's really just about the same length as far as time frame is concerned. So as I'm breaking this down, here's what I'm going to base it on. Three things. The production of the song, 
the lyrics of the song and the jam factor. And the jam factor is like, does this song jam? Period, point blank. (laughs) I mean, and the reason why I say that is because you know if a song jams or not, right? I mean, like if someone has to tell you, oh, you don't hear where it's jamming right here? I mean, it's, it's something you feel, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's really not something that you can measure. You just know or you don't know. So that's how we're going to do it. So without further ado, let's get started with <laughs> Thriller versus Purple Rain. All right. So track one. Track one on Thriller is want to be starting something track one on purple rain is let's go crazy whoo all right (laughs) so i'll put it like this this is a great way to come out the gate if you're michael jackson um you know a lot of energy in this song and i mean for me, the one of the things that stood out in this song was Mama Say Mama Sa Mama Makusa. <laughs> now again, I'm telling you, when this when this album came out, I was like nine, right? So I didn't know what that meant. Uh I would later find out that there was some controversy behind that phrase. Uh Michael Jackson at the time claimed that the phrase was Swahili. And I think he probably did that to keep, you know, the royalties to himself. Um, But come to find out, MJ actually stole that from somebody. Uh, It was sampled from a Cameroonian artist by the name of Manu Dibango. Dibango. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm sorry if I mess up your name, bro. (laughs) Manu Dibango. Uh, and the song was called So Makusa. It was released in 1973. And Michael Jackson did not give Manu Debanga credit for the use of that phrase. So Debango sued Michael Jackson in the 80s and they eventually settled out of court. But don't let me confuse you. <laughs> Why don't you take a listen at Manu Dibango's version? Check it out. Okay. You got it in your head, right? And so here's Mike's version. <laughs> yeah, it looked like Mike jacked him. But nonetheless, dope dope song. Um like I said, way to way to come out the gate if you're Michael Jackson. Um And then there's Let's Go Crazy. <laughs> oh man. Dilly beloved. We're gathered here today to get through this thing called life. When he started right there, I was I was like, yo, <laughs> I was done. Um this joint, let's go crazy, is so high energy, so I mean like it's everything. Honestly, 
if you take Wanna Be Starting Something and you probably put it up against some of the other songs, you might have a chance. But I'm going to keep it a bean. I want to be starting something is not beaten. Let's go crazy. So we go Thriller Zero, Purple Rain One. Let's move to track two. Track two, Baby Be Mine, which is on Thriller. And on a Purple Rain, track two is Take Me With You. Um, hmm. This one was relatively easy for me to decide. I think Baby Be Mine, while I think it's a good song, it is probably the least, my least favorite song on uh, Thriller. It actually, to me, sounds like a filler track. Kind of something that they just threw <laughs> threw on there. I don't, well, you know what? Let me go back. I can't say that they just threw it on there. It just... It does to me. It doesn't sound like it fits, and I, of course, I didn't realize that at nine. But you know, years later, yeah, it, it it doesn't fit. I don't think it fits on this album. It's a decent song. It sounds like something that didn't make Michael Jackson's previous album off the wall, but they felt like it. It, it kind of had that off the wall feel, but it 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 wouldn't have made off the wall. So, um. Like I said, it sounds like a filler track. Uh, Take Me With You. No. <laughs> Baby Me Mine is not comparing to Take Me With You. Um, drive Me Crazy. Drive Me All Night. Just Don't Break Up The Connection. Come on, man. What you doing with that, Mike? You're not doing nothing with that. Uh, the drums. I mean, pff, come on, man. Uh, I, I got I got to give that one to take me with you so if you're scoring at home right now it is thriller zero purple rain two so then we move to track three the girl is mine featuring paul mccartney versus the beautiful ones um which is on purple rain okay I'll say this. The Girl Is Mine is not a... It's, it's, not, a, it's not a bad song, but it's not a good song either. <laughs> Relatively speaking. You know what? I, I take that back. It's, it's a decent song. I think where they go wrong and where they lose me is when Paul McCartney and Michael Jackson are talking to each other and Michael goes, you know, I'm a lover, not a fighter. You know, that's, I mean, come on, man. It's, it's even back then. And we know Mike wasn't no thug, <laughs> but he sounded real corny. And I mean, I get it. If you're going to, if this is going to be your major album, who wouldn't want Paul McCartney on their album? I mean, Paul McCartney, for those of you who don't know, is one fourth of the Beatles. Um, and so, you know, they had done music together before. So this was a no brainer. Um, so, you know, even back in the day, you know, you had guest features. So this is Mike's guest feature. Now, I will say this much. There are no guest features on Purple Rain. Uh, Prince didn't need any help. <laughs> he didn't have to go get a Beatle. But that's beside the point. But I, I don't I don't I don't take you know any points away from Mike for that. Um, but, yeah, the I'm a lover, not a fighter that. The back and forth was just, oh, all right. Um, but the beautiful ones <laughs> always smash the picture. Always, every time. Come on, man. <laughs> uh, the beautiful ones might be my favorite track on this album. So, yeah, I'm not, it's not touching this one. This is clearly a win for Purple Rain. So if you're scoring at home, we've got Thriller Zero, Purple Rain Three. All right, Mike, it's not looking too good for you, bro. You got to pick it up. All right, so then we, we move to track four. Track four on Thriller is the title track, Thriller. And track four on 
uh, purple rain is computer blue. Um, this one is interesting because this is the title track. Uh, we all remember the video. We all remember the thriller dances and everything like that. But I'm talking about just sitting here listening to the music. Um, and he threw another feature in there, which, you know, I don't think he, I don't think they really count this as a feature, but you know, uh, Vincent price at the end of thriller, uh, with his, him speaking over the track, which is really, really dope. And his voice is so scary. Um, so yeah, Mike gets a little help on this one. Uh, computer blue jams. Uh, I love how computer blue starts. I mean, it's, Where's my love life? <laughs> Tell me. What can it be? There must be something wrong with the machinery. Oh my gosh, I love that joint, man. It, it's um This one's tough for me because Computer Blue about halfway through the song the beat changes. And when that beat changes, I love that part of the song. Um that being said, I'm going to give this point to Thriller slightly because Thriller is such a, a bigger and more feeling in the track. Uh, I think Vincent Price probably puts it over the top. But I will say this much, especially for those of you who don't score the point for uh, Thriller. The one thing that I can say about a... a I don't want to say a lot, but a, quite a few of Michael Jackson's songs. And, and this also pertains to some of his music that came out after this album. The songs sound better when they're presented with visuals. So if you're watching the video, it's dope. Like it's even doper than dope. But if you're actually just sitting, just listening to the song and there's no visuals, it doesn't have the same effect. And I think Thriller might have been one of those ones that had some type because I remember Thriller getting major airplay on the radio. Um, but it doesn't sound the same when you're watching the video. The video makes it that much better. But I'm going to give Thriller the point here just slightly, slightly. But I think, again, Computer Blue, if you if you score it, if you're scoring it at home and you give Computer Blue the point, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at all. So right now we are we're at Thriller one Purple Rain three. OK, then we move to track five. Track five on um, Purple Rain is Darling Nikki. Track five on Thriller is Beat It. Um, Beat It is a big, big record for Michael Jackson. I mean, we all know that. Um, when you listen to the lyrics, you know, as I mentioned earlier, Mike's not a thug, but Mike's kind of thugging it out on this one. <laughs> he says, you want to be bad. He t he's actually telling somebody to beat it. I mean, like beat it, you know, for those of you who weren't around, it's like telling somebody to get lost, scram, you know, bye, whatever. Um, and then darling Nikki. Oh my gosh, man. Again, I was nine. I had no business knowing the lyrics to this song. I knew a girl named Nikki. I guess you could say she was a sex fiend. I met her in a hotel lobby masturbating with a magazine. I had no clue as to what masturbating meant. <laughs> but I was singing a song like I like it was my shit. And it was. Um so how do we break this one down? I'm going to give this one to Thriller. Uh, I'll give it to Beat It because Mike, he kind of thugged it out on this one. He, he, he was a little tougher. Um, the guitar uh, solo, Eddie Van Halen was, rest in peace, crazy, crazy, crazy solo guitar. Um, but this one's close. But I'm going to give it to... Uh, I'm going to give it to uh, to Thriller and beat it. Um, but darling, Nikki goes so hard. <laughs> and if you saw and I, and I, and again, I'm not in my assessment. I'm not 
bringing the movie into uh, this discussion. But if you remember the, in the movie what happened when he performed Darling Nikki and Apollonia runs out, man, that is funny. And he's on top of the uh, stage. <laughs> Prince is a wild boy. Man, I miss that dude. Um, all right. So we're at Thriller 2, Purple Rain 3. Okay. So Mike is closing in here. Okay. All right. So then we go to track six. And this is a heavyweight battle. Billy Jean versus When Doves Cry. So Thriller has Billy Jean. Prince's Purple Rain has When Doves Cry. Um, on paper, you might think it's close. To me, this one's easy. When Doves Cry wins this battle. First of all, the guitar solo at the beginning is bananas. And I don't know, and maybe someone, one of you who are listening can tell me, I'm not sure if Prince has ever, other than uh, other than what he did on this record, I'm not sure if Prince has ever played that guitar riff again the same way ever, ever again. And I like I, I can't get anybody to confirm that this was the one time that he did it like that. But like, it's crazy. But nonetheless, um yeah, man, it's it's uh that that right there, and and remember earlier when I talked about a song being able to jam, when doves cry, jams. I mean, like, don't get me wrong, Billy Jean jams too because Mike is the baby daddy, and it was <laughs> it was the first time in the history of music that I can remember that you know somebody was claiming to be the baby daddy or being being uh uh pointed out as being the baby daddy well, of course we didn't call it baby daddy back then because again it was the 80s we didn't know no better but nonetheless yeah i think um i think for as strong as billy jean is when doves cries is a better song it's a better song it jams it's funky it's it's it beats it to me it's not close for most of you it's probably a lot closer than what i'm making it sound but yeah, I'm I'm going when doves cry uh all day long. So right now, Purple Rain four, Thriller two. <laughs> then we move to track seven. Track seven for Purple Rain is I Would Die for You. Track seven for Thriller, Human Nature. Who okay. Um this one was close for me. Uh first and foremost, I would die for you is one of those songs that I mean you gotta move. You gotta move and you gotta get up and you gotta it's a feel good song. Like you can't listen to this song and not feel good about anything. Um But human nature, man. <laughs> Mike was on some cool out shit, right? Mike was on some cool out shit. And I think he was just, this was the one time where he really got to be cool. And, and you can't really out cool somebody like Prince, but you know, Mike did it on this song. And, and I mean, obviously this song has been sampled from, you know, SWV to uh, Nas. Um, but that's beside the point. I think human nature gets the slightest edge for me the slightest edge so i'm going human nature with the win so now thriller is at three purple rain closing in excuse me thriller's closing in on purple rain and purple rain is at four and we only got two more tracks so here we go track eight track eight on purple rain Baby, I'm a star. Track eight on Thriller. PYT, which is Pretty Young Thing. Um, I mean, it goes without saying, Mike, you can't be singing about Pretty Young Things. Um, <laughs> again, 
in the 80s we let a lot of shit slide we we, we let this slide and i don't think he was talking about someone underaged at least i hope not um but now nah, this one's uh baby i'm a star is again if 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 this comes on and you can't move or don't want to move something's wrong with you like there's nothing wrong with this song this song is a feel-good song again prince is closing out this album strong with i would die for you and baby i'm a star but you know and he tells in the song like you might not know it now but baby i'm a star i mean like that self-affirmation was dope in and of itself um yeah but pyt is a py and, and don't get me wrong pyt is a very good song but nah it ain't touching baby i'm a star so purple rain is now at five thriller is at three with one track to go last track thrillers the lady in my life versus the title track purple rain um the lady in my life is a really nice song but there's no way in hell it's it's touch a purple rain Purple Rain for the win. I mean, Purple Rain, the, the, the title track is my second favorite song. It's, no, it's probably a tie for first. I got to take that back. It's probably a tie for first as far as my favorite songs on the album. Um, and, I mean, Prince is incredible when he does it, when he performs this. I mean, if you want to see something special, just go to, you know, go to your, uh, your YouTubes and, and pull up you know, Prince performing in the Super Bowl and then he's performing Purple Rain. It was crazy. Um, or any live version of him performing Purple Rain is just bananas. Trust me on that. Um, but yeah, it's not, it, it, it's not even close. So I've got <laughs> Purple Rain winning six to three. And to be honest, I probably could make a case that I Would Die For You could win and that would put Prince at seven to two, but I'm not gonna do that. But yeah, that's that's the tale of the tape, man. I mean, honestly, Thriller is a very good album. It's a very good album that everybody bought, and it propelled Michael Jackson to, you know, supernova status. But if we're being honest. It's not close to Purple Rain, honestly. Musically, I mean, for one, Prince did all of the music. Michael Jackson didn't do any. He didn't produce any songs. He just wrote a little bit. Rod Temperton wrote most of this album for him. Um, And again, it's no knock, but I'm just, you know, I don't even know that there's an even comparison because, again, Prince played damn near all the instruments. And, I mean, his band was crazy and mike never had a band i mean <laughs> i mean so and mike did what he could i don't want i don't want to sound like i'm dumping on mike but you know honestly they these two albums are aren't in the same ballpark honestly and if we really want to keep it a bean off the wall is better than thriller I mean, it is. <laughs> Maybe I'll come back and do a podcast on that one. Um, but yeah, Off the Wall is better than Thriller. I don't think Thriller is Michael Jackson's best work. It's his most popular work. It's, pro- it's probably his second best album, but it is not better than Off the Wall. But that's another story for another day. But nah, it's not touching Purple Rain. I'm sorry. And I, and I, and I will say I'm a huge fan of both guys, and I miss both of them dearly. Um but nah, man, it's 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 not there. It's just not there. So you, I gave you the tail of the tape. I gave you the breakdown. You tell me what you think. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for checking out this edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. Make sure that you subscribe because I will be dropping bonus content from time to time and you don't want to miss it. So that's going to do it for me. Again, thanks for checking out this edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. I'll catch you guys next time. 5,000.